Well, of course, it wasn't immediate when we began uh, the uh, going on mission and so forth uh, because of formation and, and studies and so forth. But uh, quickly on, I did go to uh, Mexico with another sister to visit another uh, congregation because they had the same, uh, a group of sisters, another congregation in Dallas. And so they asked us if they, we wanted to go with them to see their, their place in Mexico. And uh, of course we did. And that was really my first time going to Mexico. A lot of people thought that, you know, well, I should know more about Mexico and speak Spanish and all of that, but I really didn't. Uh, because of the way things were in school, you could not speak the Spanish and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, we we did go and uh, it, it was really wonderful to see another culture, this other culture that was just so alive and enthusiastic. And uh, it really kind of touched something in me. Then we took another trip further uh, down south and uh, more of an indigenous area. And so uh, the coming back, when I, when I returned, I was asked to share some of that and everybody said, oh my gosh, she is so enthusiastic. We should send her out more often. So anyway, uh, that's kind of what, uh, how, how that began. And uh, then uh, there was a priest in the Diocese of Dallas, uh, Father Bob Thames. And um, he uh, always, always worked with youth. And I was working in, in that parish. And uh, he gathered a group every summer, a team to go to Mexico, to go out into the different villages. And uh, he would take doctors and dentists and uh, other catechists and so forth. And so we started uh, going every summer and then we started going also at Christmas break. And then we went by ourselves <laughs> and we would spend time up in the uh, mountains, uh, in the mountain villages. There were about three and we would go to, um, to them and have uh, services and uh, prayer and work with the women and had a little dispensary and had uh, sewing sessions and so forth. So that was what we, we uh, did over there. But uh, in the meantime, then, you know, uh, continuing studies here and, and so forth. But um, uh, later on, before my final vows, I, um, I, I went to the World Council of Youth in Taizé, uh, France, with a group of other sisters of St. Mary from different countries who were also making their final vows. And of course, being there with uh, an incredible uh, number, like 40,000 young people, and joining in those... Um, multilingual uh, prayers and meetings with different language groups and, and so forth, talking about the needs of the world and talking about all these uh, different things that brought you out of your uh, smaller context. It brought you into kind of like a world context. And so you were able to uh, listen and hear and engage and make friends uh, with these people. Uh, and right after that, uh, that experience, we lived in tents, by the way, while we were there for uh, about a month. And uh, so that was throughout the month of August. Later on uh, in September, while I was still in Europe, I was asked to go to Africa so that I would uh, be more, um, uh, experience in the ways of missions, the missions of the Sisters of St. Mary. So I was in Rwanda for several months and I, um, of course, had a, another experience uh, with the sisters and I was able to uh, 
learn uh, a little bit about uh, their their way of being, their their um, just just living with the sisters, the life there, the the prayer, the experience of uh, also it was the famine, the time of the famine. So living with them during that time and seeing the wants and the needs, not just of the sisters, but of the surrounding population. It does something to you to live through that, to, to see children who should be the size of a teenager and they were the size of a, uh, you know, a 10 year old. So, and, and that was due to the lack of nutrition. So all these uh, different uh, levels of uh, experience go into form you interiorly and form your values and form and shape your desires about what is important in this world, about what, uh, what are the deeper calls in religious life or they, some people say, oh, well, you know, they enter to save their souls. Are you kidding me? We have the uh, world before us, the world of need, the world of suffering, the world that is calling to us uh, to open our hearts to their suffering, to their needs, and um, to uh, move out of the out of oneself to the broader call of the needs of people. And, and, and so those things, those experiences shaped you. Uh, culture, language, uh, experience, relationships, all of these things go into the mix of forming who one becomes no longer the child from Houston who had a personal desire to follow Christ, but a woman who has been shaped by, uh, yes, the love of God, but yes, the broader world of need that is out there calling us to service. So that broadens your experience and your desire to serve in a certain way and be willing to go through what it takes to form you so that you can really be able to give what is needed, not just what you want, but what is needed is something might be something different. So I will go through this process to become that person 